Hi and welcome to MRTV Live episode number nine. As you know, this is the weekly live stream in which I'm going to tell you about all the exciting news in VR and AR and also about interesting news that happened to me. <laughs> and this week, in this episode, we're going to talk about the HTC Vive customer service debacle again. And we're going to talk about the standalone launches, the launches of the Oculus Go and the Lenovo Mirage Solo. Very exciting. And we're going to talk about the launch of the Pimax 8K or to be more specific about the M1 device of the Pimax 8K. The very first Pimax 8K that is going to be sent out to some people like me, for example. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Skyrim VR for PC very very exciting and so many more news all coming up yeah hi and welcome here again at mixed reality tv my name is sebastian ang and if this is your first time here and you are just as excited about vr and air as me then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. Yes, welcome to MRTV Live episode number nine. And well, this is the live stream. So if you're not watching this live, then simply stick to this anyways. Or if you don't want to stick with this, simply have a look into the description because I'm going to time code all of the topics of this show and then you can directly jump to the topic that you are more interested in, but I can simply tell you, stick to it, it's very, very interesting. So for all of you who are watching this live, well, as you know, this show is special. This show is not just about me telling you about the news, this show is about me interacting with you. And we can do that on the MRTV Discord server. So simply go to the MRTV Discord server, the link is in the description of this video. Um, yeah, it's a great free resource where you can get in touch with like-minded people who are all excited about VR and AR and well, you can also chat there with me. And if you want to interact with me during this live stream, simply go to the MRTV Discord server and go to the live stream channel. There's one channel which is just dedicated for this live stream and simply chat there with me. And well, whenever you want to say something to me, Simply use the at Sebastian tag and then I'm going to see that you want to um, speak with me and I'm going to read it out. So we're going to have a conversation via the MRTV Discord server. Yeah, so simply if you would like to simply chat with me and if you want to interact with me again for all the people who are now in the YouTube chat, go to the Discord server, it's so much better. And the great thing is the chatting never ends there. So no matter if I'm on the live stream or not, or if there's a new um, show on MRTV, we always chat there on the MRTV Discord server. It's a great free resource. And you guys who are in the YouTube chat now, you should all totally go into the on, onto the MRTV Discord server. It is free, there is a web version of Discord. Simply click on the link in the description and go to the live stream channel so we can chat there. So I would like to say hi to all of you guys. Hi to Cosmonaut, hi to Kata, hi to Rolls, hi to Daniel Bryan Army, hi to Hemi, hi to Raging Donut, hi to all of you here. It's going to be a really great show, I'm sure of that. Yeah, we're going to have some very good topics here. <laughs> and we're going to start very, very soon. Let me just change here so I can see what you guys are writing. It seems like, oh, also we have Mo Fun here. Nice, Mo, good to see you. We have Brutalness here. We have pushed the button. Yeah, lots of people are here in the chat. So nice to see everyone. It seems like that tonight the stream is really good. That is very nice. All right. Good. Then I think I can simply start with the very first topic for tonight. <laughs> yes. Mo is on time tonight. Okay. The very first topic, again, is about the HTC Vive customer service. I really hope that you're still interested in this topic. I still would like to talk about it because I don't think that we resolved it. For all of you who don't know what happened, I broke my HTC Vive because I sweat into it. I played, 
I played, no, not Skyrim, I played Sprint Vector. I sweated into it, the device broke after only two months. I sent it in and they wanted to have 204 euros from me for the repair or 45 euros if I'm going to send it, if I want them to send it back to me unrepaired. Well, I got a bit angry and I was fighting against it. I made a video, I gave them some pressure and you know what? What happened last week? Yeah, probably you saw my video, I got it back. Here is my HTC Vive, it is repaired now for free. Now, why did this happen for free? Well, because I'm a VR YouTuber, let's be honest about it. The average Joe, he would have to be, have to pay 204 euro. So I got this device and I got a new HTC Vive from the States as well, from the super task force who are handling people like me who make lots of noise and they kind of wanted, wanted to silence me by sending me that new vibe so i have two vibes now but yeah i'm not the kind of guy who just let them silence you or bribe you right with that new vibe so i kept on pressing so that's why i got this vibe here my own vibe repaired for free so i could shut up now and be happy about it but i am not <laughs> and let me tell you why i'm still not happy why I'm still pressing on with this issue. Now, the thing is, I don't believe that HTC is changing their ways. Actually, not at all. Because just two days ago, I got, connect I got contacted by another guy who's watching my videos and he told me, Sebastian, exactly the same thing happened to me. I got the Vive for 10 days, for 10 days only. And it broke. It broke, it just broke. Well, he said he sweat a bit as well, and it broke and he sent it in. And you know what? Now they don't want 204 euros from him as they wanted from me. They wanted 280 euros from him to get his 10 days old HTC Vive fixed. Isn't that shitty? So it seems like they raised the prices. Probably they want to, to get all the money back that they lost on me. <laughs> yeah, so um, now they are, they, are, they want 280 euros from that guy who, who got that HTC Vive for 10 days. And well, he didn't it didn't fall down or what, he just sweat a bit and yeah, it broke. So it doesn't seem at all, he was also in Europe, it doesn't seem at all that um, HTC would change their ways. No, not at all. So I think that I could raise some awareness of HTC's ways, but I don't think it was enough. I don't think that this little scandal, these 25,000 views on my video, was enough to change HTC's ways. I think it must hurt them much more um, until they would really change their ways. So again, I would like to make all of you aware of one thing. I would like to make everyone aware of one thing and this one thing is that HTC changed their original warranty. They changed their original warranty in their original warranty, sweat damage was still covered and then they found out that oh shit, so many people break their vibes because of sweat. So they simply changed the warranty and now it's kind of out of warranty if you sweat into the vibe and if it breaks. So. I really want to give you guys all of this. Um, I want to make you guys aware of how sneaky this is. So let me show you now the original warranty for all of you who have not yet watched my latest video. Let me just show you that. Okay, guys, I simply want to make you aware of this, okay? So again, here is the original warranty of the HTC Vive. So in the original warranty that came with it in the beginning, it said, okay, this is the warranty. And then in the end, it says, what is not covered by this limited warranty? And then point number seven, okay, even with respect to the product or accessory you purchased, this limited warranty shall not apply, seven, to rough handling, use outdoors, exposure to liquids beyond perspiration. Now this is important, so exposure to liquids beyond perspiration. So if you put your HTC Vive into the aquarium, if you use it outdoors, if you um, pour your adult beverage 
over it, then of course, no, it's not covered by it. But if you expose it to liquids that are from perspiration, as in sweat, this is covered by the original warranty. Okay, so then they found out like, oh shit, we have a design flaw. So many people um, break their vibes because they're sweating into it. You know what? Let's simply change the warranty. <laughs> yeah, and now their current warranty is like this. So this is the current warranty of the HTC Vive. Yeah, the same thing, HTC Vive, limited warranty, blah, blah, blah. And then let's go again to the same thing, what is not covered by this limited warranty. Number seven, to rough handling, use outdoors exposure to liquids, but nothing anymore beyond perspiration. So they simply deleted this line beyond pers perspiration. Isn't that unbelievable? So they simply deleted that line and thought like, you know what? Yeah, we have we have made a design flaw with this Vive. And you know what? We simply let the customers pay for their repairs. And I think that is simply unbelievable. What do you guys think about that? Please do let me know in the live stream. I would like to read out some of your um, <laughs> some of your um, thoughts about that. Please do let me know. I really would love to read out some of your thoughts. You guys have fun with your Odyssey. Yeah, exactly. Crooks. <laughs> Instant switch to PSVR, Mofan says. Yes. Caballete says they need more competition. You said it, shitty, Hemi says. Absolute bullshit. Exactly. Sevilla says, Samsung Odyssey all the way, not HTC. Kata says, yeah, HTC is a money whore. <laughs> okay, guys, I must tell you, this live stream is not politically correct. <laughs> yeah? So, words are being said, adult beverages are being drunk. So, I want to make sure this show is just a very authentic show, okay? So, this might not be political, politically correct and stuff, but, well, it's authentic. Yeah, outrageous. So, Brutalness says, Sebastian, I like FTC, are all about making hardware and not being a software hoarder, but not a of the CS crap it needs to change yeah the customer service yeah anyways Brandon says cheers yes Brandon good to have you here on the stream yeah so that's the point yeah the point is um, Constantine says they will lose a lot of customers. Yeah, that's for sure. They're going to lose lots of lots of customers. And yeah, anyways, so they changed the warranty and it's not good. And well, yeah, so I could raise a bit of awareness, but this awareness was not enough to have them change their ways. So as you just, as I just told you, I got... Con connected with uh, from other people connected with me and lots of people actually connected with me after this and they told me yes they they're not changing at all it's still exactly the same but now they want 280 euros from them and the thing is here in Europe we have like a super strong customer protection actually within the first two years customers are completely protected so if the the device does not work as advertised yeah and they advertise with playing games and well people are just playing games with it when they sweat then they must repair or replace for free and they are not doing that so they are breaking european law and i am still not happy with what's going on so i'm going to I'm going to um, yeah up the whole thing a notch. I do have an appointment next week with a lawyer. So I'm having an appointment with a customer rights lawyer 
and I'm going to ask this lawyer, I'm going to tell the lawyer all about these cases in general, and I'm going to ask this lawyer if this is legal what they are doing. Because they are charging customers lots of money for these repairs and actually they should not, they should repair these things for free. Right? So I simply want to find out what is the matter. So I'm going to go to this lawyer and find out for sure now, is that legal what they're doing or are they breaking law in the European Union? And yeah, I'm kind of sure that they break European law here in Europe. And anyways, the customer service simply stinks. So I have two more questions for you. I mean, I asked those questions in my last video. I asked these two questions in the, the emails that I exchanged with HTC, but they did not answer it. So again, in this live show, I'm going to ask this question again. Question number one, is the HTC Vive Pro more resilient against sweat as the original Vive? Yeah, again, question number one, is the HTC Vive Pro more resilient to sweat as the original Vive or is it going to break as easily as the original Vive when you sweat into it. Question number two, for the Vive Pro, are you going to use the same warranty as for the original Vive? Are you going to use the same warranty that also has perspiration simply deleted so that you can, that you think you can simply offload these uh, repair costs to your own customers? So these are my two questions, dear HTC. So please answer them for all of the public yeah before you launch your vive pro which is going to cost 799 dollars so and i'm kind of sure that not so many people want to pay such a huge price for a device if they are not sure if i sweat into it and it breaks is htc going to repair it or are, are they going to charge me like 300 euros perhaps so this is, these are really the two big questions that I want HTC to answer for the public so that everybody with confidence can buy the Vive Pro or not. Anyways, I'm going to get the Vive Pro. Uh, probably I'm not going to get a free one from HTC. I have this feeling. <laughs> and um, I'm going to test it anyways, yeah? I'm going to test the device. I'm going to compare it with the Samsung Odyssey. And I'm also going to, yeah, I, I should probably, I should probably do a sweat test with the HTC Vive Pro. What do you guys think? Should I do the official HTC Vive Pro sweat test? If yes, please say yes. <laughs> please say yes in the live stream and in the comment section i would like to know if you want me to if you want me to do the official htc vive pro sweat test <laughs> yes okay yeah it seems like you guys want me to <laughs> You want me to do the, the sweat test, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to do the official HTC Vive Pro sweat test. And you know what? I think I will feel a bit like, I will be kind of uh, not, ex not excited about it. I will be scared to do it because this is going to be very, very expensive. And I kind of have the feeling that if the Vive if the Vive Pro breaks, I'm kind of, yeah, scared to connect with the customer service because of my recent uh, experiences. <laughs> Caballete says, do it live. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. And we have Zitronenarzt. Yeah, Zitronenarzt. Nice. Greetings to Switzerland. Good to have you here. Very nice. Yeah, anyway, so that's it here for my two big questions to HTC. So is it more resilient? Is the Vive Pro more resilient against sweat? And number two, 
are you going to have the same crooked <laughs> warranty as you have now where you simply deleted the part about perspiration that's these are my two big questions and i really want to raise more awareness about this fact that you simply change the warranty and that you simply offload that cost of the repairs for the sweat damaged vibes to your customers yeah not nice okay guys okay good now that we have that i have this off my chest <laughs> we can go on now to the real news okay so let's let us change to let us uh, change to the news wait a moment all right you should now be able to see the news yes okay okay good so now we start with the news this was these were my personal news okay and now we're going to go on with the with anything that happened in last week all right so the next news item is the oculus go is going to launch in may at the f8 conference great news finally the oculus go the standalone device from facebook and from oculus of course is going to launch in may around the f8 conference this is great news we have all been waiting for this standalone device, which is only going to cost $199, a fantastic price. This device is going to sell like hotcakes. Well, that is what I think for sure. So what is this? For all of you who don't know, what is this device? Well, this is a so-called standalone device. It means you do not need a, a computer to run it. You do not need a high-end phone. Everything is in this one package. So $199, what do $199 buy you? So you get this beautiful device here and well, it comes with this one controller. So what is it basically? Basically, it's the same as a Gear VR, but you do not need to have a Galaxy phone and you don't have to have the, the Gear VR headset. You only need to buy this device, $199 and everything is in the box so is it any good well it's as good as the gear vr so it comes with its problems it is only three degrees of freedom so what does it mean it means you can look left right up and down you can tilt your head and this is going to be within vr but if you do if you want like dodge or something like this this is not going to work this is a very very big restriction so it's gonna be the same like gear VR however I still believe this is going to sell like hotcakes because well you can watch movies in it like great huge movies and there's still lots of games for it and yeah you can watch Netflix you can bring your VR experience anywhere and the thing is this thing is simply going to uh, yeah make the hurdle to go into VR smaller so many people are going to be so excited about vr after they have watched ready player one and yeah so many people will want to watch adult movies <laughs> as push the button just said in the chat and they will be very happy to use this device for it because it only costs 199 dollars and it will be perfectly for everybody to watch adult movies right so yeah i think it's going to sell like hotcakes and yeah what else is this saying yeah so they say this is going to be significantly better than a galaxy s7 powered gbr which is really cool and yeah there will be like thousand and uh, thousand launch titles in the beginning thousand launch titles wow that is a lot so there's lots of content directly from the start and well i think that this is going to yeah it's going to sell very well guys i want to ask you now in the chat i know that you probably are hardcore vr fans you all have like windows mr you have vives you have rifts but anyways what do you think about the oculus go 
Are you going to buy it? If yes, say yes. If no, say no. Just want to just want to get an idea. I just want to get an idea if you're going to buy it, yes or no. Cosmonaut, yes. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Many people are saying no here. Wow, really? So many people are saying no. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Roll says, hell no. No. <laughs> For all the guys who are in the YouTube chat, please come over to the MRTV Discord server. For me, it's easier to look at one chat and anyways, the MRTV Discord server is a great free resource for all of you who have just joined the show. It is really good. So, wow. So, so many people are not going to buy it. That is really interesting. Okay, but the thing is, all of you, you already have VR experience. You already are um, VR fans. You have that fancy PSVR. You have that fancy Oculus Rift. So of course, for all of you, this is going to be a step back. Now I'm going to buy it, obviously, because I want, I need to show it to you and I need to review it and I need to compare it. So I believe this is a great entry level headset, just like Brandon thinks. So um, yeah, so I believe this is going to sell like hotcakes, really. It has facebook's blessing there's going to be social vr on it lots of interesting apps you can watch movies on it you you'll be able to what to use big screen on it this is a news item that i'm going to talk about later um, you will be able to invite friends into your vr you can watch movies together with them it's going to be a big hit i'm sure of this and now roll says he ha already has his sweet sweet samsung yeah that makes sense <laughs> Yeah, anyways, now we're going to talk about the next news item. It's very much connected with this. The next news item is that Lenovo confirms a May 5th, May 5th launch and $400 price for the Mirage Solo standalone VR headset. Wow, cool. I'm just looking at Caballete's um, picture that he put onto the live stream like me on the big screen that is nice <laughs> very cool nice and a very nice rig as well there perfect so let's talk about this news item now so the the competitor in the standalone area is the Lenovo Mirage Solo so the Lenovo Mirage Solo is a standalone headset which runs on the daydream platform Right, so Daydream is the big competitor of the Gear VR platform. As you know, it runs on Google phones, on um, Daydream ready phones like the Pixel or the Pixel 2, and many other phones. And yeah, so this is their take on standalone. So for this device, for the Lenovo Mir Mirage Solo, again, you also do not need a computer, you do not need um, a phone, a high-end phone or a data-ready phone, it's just like that. So the big difference as compared to the Oculus Go is that first of all the price, it's double the price. So it's a $400, $400 device and the the other big difference in, in what um, the technology is concerned, this is a 6 degrees of freedom headset. So you will not only be able to look left, right, up, down and tilt your head, you will also be able to move in six degrees of freedom. So you can dodge, you can lean in and all these kind of things that the PC VR users are accustomed to. Now, I'm just thinking about the following thing. Think about the following thing. So you have just watched Ready Player One. <laughs> And you, you kind of think, wow, this whole thing is really fantastic. And let's say you don't really understand VR. You are not a VR geek, like a freak, <laughs> like us. Like we are all like big fans of VR, right? So we, we understand what is the difference of six degrees of freedom and what is the difference uh, between six degrees and three degrees of freedom. So. A family goes into uh, Walmart, yeah, they have just watched Ready Player One and then they get to this technology section and then they see the Oculus Go 
for $200 and they see the Lenovo Mirage Solo for $400. And on the Oculus Go, there's like all these a thousand titles there and it says all these beautiful things. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg said, go and buy the Oculus Go <laughs> for $199. What do you think? Are they going to buy the Oculus Go for $199 or are they going to buy the Lenovo Mirage Solo for $400? What do you guys think? Which device are they going to buy? Please do let me know in the chat. The go, exactly. Okay, definitely Oculus. Lemmings will do Lemmings things. Yeah, of course. The thing is, the general public, they won't understand the difference. So yes, 100% sure the Lenovo Mirage Solo with Daydream is going to be better. No question about it. Like, like really, no question. This is the better device. It has six degrees of freedom. You can add storage with, with micro SD cards. It's overall better, but the general public won't understand it. They will see the price tag of double. So probably lots of couples will say, you know what? Each of us gets a headset so we can both together watch movies instead of getting one one Lenovo Mirage Solo, they're getting two Oculus Go. There's really no question about it. So in my opinion, the Lenovo Mirage Solo is overpriced at $400. If it was $299, I think lots of people would think like, okay, you know what? It seems like this device is so much better. They would actually think about it. They would think about getting it. They would kind of actually like really pr probably even started a discussion or they will try to look up the differences. Why is this device $100 more expensive? So at $299, the, the Lenovo Mirage Solo had a chance, but at $400, I am convinced that the, the Lenovo Mirage Solo will not stand a chance against the Oculus Go. And they are kind of, um, yeah, they are launching at the same time. Do you agree with me on that? Do you also think that the Oculus Go will sell much, much better than the Lenovo Mirage Solo? What do you think about that? Do you, do you agree with it? Yep. Yes, 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 yes. You guys agree. Okay. So it's it's like it's like really really sad i really don't understand it i mean i understand that lenovo is a hardware company just like vive just like htc vive right so they need to make money on these devices right but i still think why why didn't daydream why didn't google make a daydream go device which is also only three degrees of freedom and which could compete against the oculus go on price and then they could still do the Lenovo Mirage Solo with six degree, degrees of freedom for people who understand that it's much better, right? So why don't you directly, why don't they directly make a device which will compete against the Oculus Go on price, call it Daydream Go, make it three degrees of freedom and price it at $189 and show the world the awesome Daydream games, right? Because now anyways, for that six degrees of freedom, um, Daydream standalone device, I doubt that there's going to be so much of, um, of content. So all the content is three degrees of freedom and the developers themselves, they have the option to, to, um, to update their apps to make them six degrees of freedom. So we don't know yet how many people are really going to do it. So it's a big question. We don't know that yet. And uh, I have the feeling there is not going to be so many six degrees of freedom games. 
And the thing is, unfortunately, Daydream really, really has a big momentum problem. There's no momentum. All the developers who, who, who spend lots of money to develop Daydream games, they all didn't make any money. They really, really only sold a couple of hundred, couple of thousand of their copies and they never made enough money. And you know what, me myself, I made a whole channel about Daydream. I spent a whole year making content for Daydream, more than 400 videos. And um, yeah, it's I can simply feel that nobody is really excited for it, you know? And well, for me, like I had to think about ways to deal with that. So I, I, I started Mixed Reality TV, this channel, and I'm really happy about it because people are excited about PC VR. Things are happening, you know, but on Daydream, there's nothing happening and there's really no momentum at all. And all the people who spend so much time and money on Daydream, they're all like super pissed with Google because they're not pushing it. And again, now with, with this half-assed um, approach of the Lenovo, they're not going to win. But you know who really knows how to push VR? It's really Mark Zuckerberg with Oculus. It's unbelievable how this guy does business perfect. This Oculus Go, it really totally, it's, it's, kill, it's gonna kill the Daydream standalone device. They really have a fantastic product at a super cheap price and it totally got Google off guard. And yeah, that's what I'm thinking. What do you guys think of that? Do you agree with that? That Oculus Go and that Mark Zuckerberg really knows about business and that this aggressive approach is going to win? If yes, say yes. Cheers, yes, yep, yes, you agree guys. Yep, Mo also agrees. <laughs> so yeah, so the aggressive approach of Mark Zuckerberg is going to win and yeah, that's business. He's such a good businessman and this is simply the way to go and I believe that nobody or very little, pe a very, very small amount of people are going to buy the Lenovo Mirage Solo, which in turn means it's not exciting for software developers to port their games to the Daydream platform. Not exciting, right? And lots of, lots of developers are going to develop for the Oculus Go, simply because there's lots of people who have the device. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, so this is one thing that really, really is sad because I really like the Daydream platform. Anyways, now let's go to the next news item. And the next news item is also about a standalone device. Now we're going to talk about the Santa Cruz. So. What is the Santa Cruz? The Santa Cruz is another standalone headset also from Oculus, but this is the more high-end one. So what is high-end about the Santa Cruz? So the Santa Cruz also does not need a computer. It does not need a high-end smartphone, but the Santa Cruz has full six degrees of freedom for the headset and it has two controllers which are fully six degrees of freedom so i forgot to tell you guys that this device here the lenovo the lenovo mira solo the daydream standalone headset it only has one boring controller this year and this is only a six a three degrees of freedom controller so the only thing you can do with this with the lenovo mira solo you can only point at things. You cannot reach. You can only point. And this is simply boring. So again, the Santa Cruz is going to be like really, really nice. It's a standalone headset. It has two controllers with six degrees of freedom. So all of the games that we love from Steam VR will probably 
be ported to Santa Cruz. <laughs> and that is pretty awesome, right? So all the games that you love right now, Job Simulator, whatever, everything that needs these two controllers in six degrees of freedom, all the games that we love, Rec Room, all this stuff can be ported to Santa Cruz. And yeah, this is going to be very, very huge. I'm super sure that this is going to be like an, an unbelievably awesome headset and it's going to be a big hit. I'm very sure of it. Anyways, so what is the news about it? So Oculus to talk developing for Santa Cruz standalone headset next week, a step closer to launch. So let me read that out for you guys. Project Santa Cruz, Oculus in development standalone VR headset, first teased back at Oculus Connect 2016, doesn't even really have a proper name yet, but at this year's Game Developers Conference, the company will be dedicating an hour-long talk to the fundamentals of developing for the new platform. Giving developers more insights into the headset's limitations could mean launch might be right around the corner. Wow, launch might be right around the corner. So the thing is, they already have sent out the development kits to software developers. So actually, this is kind of this is kind of ready already. This is nearly finished. So this is incredible. When we first got our hands on the first publicly shown iteration of Santa Cruz back at Connect 2016, it was essentially a prototype microcomputer integrated into an Oculus Rift headset. It has since been developed into a bespoke headset replete with several integrated optical sensors to not only give the headset itself six degrees of freedom, but critically allowing for six degrees of freedom controllers as well. So this is really the big thing about this. With the Oculus Go, you only have three degrees of freedom for the headset, just means you can look left, right, up and down and tilt your head. And you only have one controller, also only uh, three degrees, degrees of freedom. You can only point, you cannot reach. So this one has six degrees of freedom, meaning you get an experience much closer to a tethered PC VR experience than mobile VRs for runners. Yeah. In our latest hands-on with the Santa Cruz, we got a brief sense of the sort of room scale experience the headset could run. But with Oculus sharing more insight into the headset's limitations, it's likely Santa Cruz is nearing finalization and heading toward launch sometime soon. Wow, entitled Developing for Santa Cruz, the talk with will feature Gabor Saucer, Oculus developer, relations engineer and any more people, blah, blah. And here's the description. Standalone represents an exciting new category for game development and an approachable first VR platform for developers new to immersive design. Members of the Oculus engineering and content teams will discuss the key difference between Santa Cruz and other headsets and offer practical insights on design and development considerations for the future of VR. Yeah, anyways, Santa Cruz is coming. And well, of course, it would be so awesome to have it come in this year already. It would be so nice to have it around, yeah, Christmas perhaps, Christmas 2018. That would be incredible. But honestly speaking, I don't believe this is going to come out in 2018 because, well, if Oculus Go is going to launch in 2018 in May, I believe if they would directly come up with a better with a better system, it kind of would cannibalize the um, Oculus Go sales. And I believe that they will first push Oculus Go like crazy in this year to have it sell millions, millions of devices. And then once people are getting used to the Oculus Go, once they understand the difference between three degrees of freedom and six degrees of freedom, once the Oculus Go uses one more, they're going to tell them, okay, you know what? 2019 Santa Cruz upgrade from the Oculus Go to the Santa Cruz. So I believe that the Santa Cruz is not going to, is not going to um, launch in 2018, but I believe it's going to launch in 2019. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? When is the Santa Cruz going to launch? 
Do you think it's going to launch 2018 in in uh, winter, or do you th do you think it's going to launch in uh, 2019? Cosmonaut is Santa Cruz inside out tracking. Yes, exactly. So with Santa Cruz, you do not need uh, base stations. It's just like Microsoft. So it's uh, inside out tracking. You can bring this anywhere. It's going to be really, really cool. <laughs> Hemi says 2020. Yeah, I think it's going to be earlier. Constantine says this year, push the button 2019. MoFun says, wish someone will make good mobile device that also is connectable to PC too. This is an interesting idea. And you know what, MoFun, I think actually it's more going to be like that the mobile device will have network connection like uh, Wi-Fi, for example, and then you can simply stream your um, Steam stuff to the device. Something like is happening now like you, you know you can play your steam vr games if you have another pc in the same network you can stream it and probably it's going to be like you have a wi-fi module in your um, mobile device and then you can simply stream your steam vr games into the device i believe this is one thing and well the next the next thing that's going to happen for sure is that you're going to have like a 5g um, module in the device in one of the next devices and then wherever you are you can simply stream your steam vr games from the cloud into your headset so definitely this is this is what's going to happen yeah exactly that's fine too yeah i think so too right that's that would be good enough <laughs> good all right all right all right all right Yes, cheers guys. So again, for everybody who's in the YouTube chat now, I hardly look at the YouTube chat. I look at the live stream channel on the MRTV Discord server. So if you would like to interact with me, please come to the MRTV Discord server. It's a great free resource and the link is in the description of this video. So for me, it's easier to simply look at one chat and well, it's the MRTV Discord server where things are happening. Okay, great. All right. Let's go to the next news item then. Oh, yes. It's about Pimax 8K. The pre-production Unix units are planned for April and the initial backer shipments on track for Q2. So Pimax 8K, for all of you who don't know it yet, Pimax 8K is a really exciting virtual reality headset which is most probably going to revolutionize <laughs> the industry. And why is that the case? Well, the Pimax 8K has an unbelievably awesome field of view of 200 degrees. And as you know, the VR headsets that we're using now, they have a field they have a field of view of 110 degrees and the difference is simply stunning. If you know my channel, you know that I had some hands-on time with an early um, pre-production device. Um, I, play, I, I, I was able to use that for like two hours on myself. And the difference to Vive, Rift and all the Windows Mixed Reality headset is only stunning. It's unbelievably stunning. So. If you say that uh, using the current devices is like looking through uh, binoculars, using the Pimax 8K is like looking through a ski mask. It's incredible. The FOV, the bigger FOV makes a huge, huge difference. And also the Pimax 8K, it comes with two 4K screens. So you have very, very little screen door effect and this device is simply pretty unbelievable. They had an incredible Kickstarter campaign last year that uh, earned them more than $4 million, the most successful virtual reality Kickstarter campaign. Uh, incredible. And well, I was one of the backers. I said, yes, 
I will back this and yeah, I paid $800 um, for it to, to get it. And $800 is the full, uh, is the 8K unit together with the controllers and together with the base stations. Yeah, so they said they wanted to deliver this in January 2018, but yeah, well, you know, Kickstarter campaigns, well, it never works out like this. And um, yeah, so it didn't happen. However, they are going to send the pre-production units out in April and the initial backer shipments are on track for Q2. So what does it mean? So what does it mean pre-production units? So Pimax is going to send a couple of pre-production units out to some VR influencers. And um, it's only a couple of devices, probably five or six. <laughs> and yes, I am one of the very, very few people who is going to get the Pimax 8K before everybody else. So I'm one of the very, very few people who is going to be able to review the Pimax 8K before it goes into mass production. This is really cool news because it means that you're going to have the very first Pimax 8K review here on Mixed Reality TV. So definitely, if you're not subscribed to Mixed Reality TV yet, you should absolutely do that now because me, <laughs> I'm going to have the Pimax 8K before everyone else. And it's going to happen in April. So April is going to be a very, very exciting month. And um, yeah, it's going to be super exciting for me, of course, for this channel. It's going to be very big for this channel. And yeah, as you know, I'm reviewing the shit out of this device. I'm going to review it and I'm going to be very... Yeah, strict. I'm going to tell you the full truth. If it's going to be awesome, I'm going to tell you it's awesome. If I think it's not good enough, if there are any weaknesses, I'm going to tell you because you know that this channel is giving you super unbiased reviews. Yes. So, Admiral Akbar says, Sebastian, are you building a new PC to run it? What are the minimum requirements for Pimax 8K? I can't wait. I'm sure you can't either. Exactly. I can't wait for this. It's going to be super, super exciting to get it. And yeah, the minimum specs are a GDX 1070. And that is exactly what I have. If you're watching this channel for a longer time, then you know that I am using a laptop for all my VR stuff. I'm using a laptop, an MSI gaming laptop with a GDX 1070. And you know what? I'm going to use that GDX 1070 because Pimax says that the minimum requirements are 1070. And if the Pimax cannot run on my GDX 1070, well, I must tell this to the world, first of all, and I will have to upgrade my, <laughs> I'll have to buy a PC with a GDX 1080. But I'm going to run, I'm going to try to run it on the GDX 1070 because on their official homepage, they say that the minimum requirements are a GDX 1070. So if somebody with a GDX 1070 buys it and then it doesn't work, that kind of sucks, right? So I'm going to run this on, the, on my GDX 1070 and if it doesn't work yet, yeah, I will not be so happy, happy. And I will have to upgrade to a GDX 1080 and you know how expensive they are right now, right? So I really hope that this is going to run on, um, I really hope that this is going to run on the GDX 1070. We'll, I will see. Yeah. So Dark Quencher is backer number 852, nervously waiting on the Pimax 8K. <laughs> yeah. So MoFun is prepared anyway to have a GDX 1080 in 
the Mac. Yeah, okay, Mo. <laughs> yeah, probably would be better to have a 1080, right? But they're a bit of expensive. <laughs> they're a bit expensive. Anyways, I'm going to try to run this on a 1080, uh, on a 1070 on my laptop first. And then I'm going to do a sweat test. <laughs> so, of course, I'm going to um, compare the Pimax 8K with the HTC Vive Pro, if the Vive Pro still works after the sweat test. And I'm also going to compare this with the Odyssey. And I'm going to let you know if it's worth it to get the Pimax 8K. And yeah, we're going to see how this is going to go. So, um, Admiral Akbar says, have you ever tried one before, the Pimax 8K? It looks bulky. So yes, I have absolutely tried one before. And uh, yeah, I had like two hours hands on time with it that I could use with that device. So I played everything. I played all kind of games on it and it was simply blowing my mind. And it looks huge, right? It looks bulky, it looks crazy, but it is actually really light and it's very, very comfortable. So I can tell you guys, it is really, really a very comfortable device. And if you have not watched my, uh, my um, review, my hands-on review of the device, please go to go to YouTube and look for Pimax 8K review and you're going to find my review there. How much do I think it weighed? Yeah, I would say like probably 400 grams. So I would say it was around the same like, like the Oculus Rift, 450 perhaps. Yeah. Okay, Pimax 8K in April coming to Germany, coming to Mixed Reality TV. And yeah, simply stay tuned to find my review on this channel. Alrighty, let's go to the next news item here. And the next news item is... Ready Player One. Yes, Ready Player One. We're getting closer to the Ready Player One launch in cinemas. And yeah, we're like two weeks away from it. And again, like every time I talk about Ready Player One, you now have the wonderful chance to either read the book, Ready Player One, or to listen to the, oops, listen to the audiobook. If you have not done so, please do so before you watch the movie. Because now you have the chance to enjoy the audiobook and to fantasize yourself how the world looks like. After you watch the movie, you will always see the Wade Watts, how you've seen him in the movie, right? You will never have your own imagination. But before you watch the movie, please do read the book or listen to the audiobook. The audiobook is sensational. I love the audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic. <laughs> yes, LG Mario, exactly. Um, the audiobook is fantastic. So all of you who have not read or who have not listened to the audiobook or the book, do it now. It is fantastic. It is my most favorite uh, VR book. Okay, honestly speaking, I have not read so many other books. Yeah, like Mo. I know Mo, he, he um, told me I should read Neuromancer and I will do that. But um, I really, really love Ready Player One. It's incredible. So please do read the audio, uh, read the book or listen to the audiobook. It is fantastic. And Snow Crash. Yes, Mo, I will totally read them both or listen to the audiobook if possible. I really love to listen to audiobooks because well, I can do that when I'm driving the car or when I'm running, you know, this kind of thing. So I use that time when I do some tasks that are normally boring, like on the treadmill and stuff to listen to audiobooks. So hopefully Snow Crash and Neuromancer, hopefully they also have good audiobooks. Yes. <laughs> good. Anyways, the I'm looking forward to watch the movie, of course, like probably most of you, probably all of you. 
And uh, well, Ready Player One had already premiered on South by Southwest. And the reviews are in. And the reviews are mostly positive. Some are enthusiastic. So I kind of have the feeling that this is going to be a great movie. Now, let's have a look at the reviews. I'm going to read out some reviews for you, okay? And we can comment on these reviews while I'm reading them. So while I'm reading them, let me know what the, how that makes you feel, what I'm reading out now, and um, if that kind of makes you excited or if you think the reviewer sucks. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you guys, for this, for this thing, I'm really biased, yeah, because for this thing, I think I'm really a fanboy. I can't wait to watch this movie because I'm just so excited about it. So for this, I must say I'm really, really a fanboy and I'm totally biased. So I'm going to read out those reviews for you guys now. Okay, so. Okay, so they have watched it at South by Southwest. We have watched the trailer several times now on this channel and now the reviews. Okay, IGN. Alana Pierce gives it a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5, okay. Everything in Ready Player One ties together into an action-packed, upbeat hero's journey that keeps the film moving along at a thrilling pace. Sounds good. While it's not particularly emotional and I was disappointed by how many questions are left open by its shallow visits to the real world, it's still a lot of fun a lot of fun. Countless cameos and funny moments make it easy to plug into and enjoy Steven Spielberg's adaptation of the beloved sci-fi novel Ready Player One. And it's far more than just a reference fest. Nice. So this is kind of positive, right? So IGN gives it a 7.5 out of 10. Not bad. So kind of positive. Let's go to the next one. Variety. Owen Gleiberman. Yet all this adds up on paper without ever seeming like more in the movie than a frame on which Spielberg can hang his eruptive visual imagination. Ready Player One is set in a dilapidated future where fantasy rules because reality looks hellish by comparison. Yet the movie puts you in a different mindset. By the end, you are more than ready to escape from all the escapism. Steven Spielberg has turned Ernest Klein's novel into a virtual reality fanboy here, <laughs> geek out, that's entrancing when it's virtual, less so when it's real. Okay, this one is a bit negative. But yeah, fanboy geek, yes, so probably I will love it anyways. <laughs> anyways. Let's go for the next one, let's see. IndieWire, Eric Cohn, B+. Ready Player One is one of the more clever excuses to run wild with special effects. Of course, that outcome makes sense from a filmmaker whose entire legacy has been steeped in showmanship. As it cycles through dozens of references to past achievements, Ready Player One amounts to a frantic attempt at making the past 30 odd years of popular culture by one of its greatest architects. Without seeing the movie, it's hard to imagine anyone could turn it into a satisfying product. By the end, it's clear that only Steven Spielberg can. Nice. So that is kind of positive again. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. Looking forward to it. So yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of positive. So these guys are kind of like very they are very critic critical but you know guys i think us the vr fans the vr enthusiast we're going to eat it up spoonful <laughs> was it even correct english probably not we're going to love that movie i'm so sure of it and i cannot wait for it so i'm going to read out one more uh, one more review because it's from the verge and i kind of like the verge normally let's see what it says tasha robinson okay i'm going to read out one more review here and while the film's real world gets left behind in the rush, the attention to detail during the Oasis scene is absolutely astounding. Yes! Nice. 
Not just the details Klein salivated over on the page, like that Knight Rider scanner on the grill of Wade's car, but the subtle nuances, like the way Wade's avatar constantly seems to be standing in flattering breeze that ruffles his hair in the most winsome way possible. Nice. All the way Artemis' two big enemy eyes catch the light. The uncanny valley effect is strong in these game avatars, but Spielberg uses it, uses it to his, his advantage, reminding his audience at every moment that what they are seeing is mostly a fantasy created by people who see image as almost everything. All those feelings of love and obsession came through clearly on the page, but on the screen they are bigger and better because they are so much more intense and so much closer to the memorable images that turned Klein into an obsessive in the first place. Yes! Nice! Perfect! I'm so much looking forward to watch Ready Player One. It is going to be so good and please, 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 for all of you who have no idea what is Ready Player One, get the book now or get, get at least the audiobook. Probably the audiobook is even better. It's so nice to listen to it. It is simply fun. Get the audiobook as soon as possible before you watch the movie. It's going to blow you away. The VR future is in this book. It is the VR Bible. <laughs> okay, yeah. Great reviews. Totally agreed. Cheers, ZK Nightlight. Cheers. Cheers to all of you. Okay, let's go to the next news item here. And the next news item is going to be a short one. So it is about the Game Developers Conference 2018 and it's going to be about Apex Construct. As you, as you know, I went to Stockholm to check out the game. I'm playing the game now on PSVR and I'm now playing the game on Windows Mixed Reality. And I can tell you already, it's much better on Windows Mixed Reality on PSVR. It was kind of frustrating for me because like it's so tough to to uh, use the keyboard you have to use some virtual keyboards and uh, it's simply not good but on PC VR it's much much better and you know what on the GDC 2018 Apex Construct is being shown on Gear VR so they have ported the game to Gear VR and the exciting thing is they have ported the game to Gear VR with 6 degrees of freedom so yes, they're using the Gear VR's camera or the Samsung Galaxy, which is inside the Gear VR to do six degrees of freedom tracking with Apex Construct. And I think that is pretty, pretty incredible. And MoFun wants to um, defend <laughs> the pride of the PSVR by saying that he mistyped on the Oculus 2. <laughs> But really, it was a big difference, really. I, I really didn't enjoy lots of parts for, for the PSVR game because the tracking is really not on par as compared to the PC VR. So definitely enjoying uh, Apex Construct much, much more on, <laughs> on the PC VR headset. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty incredible that it is that they're that they're able to port the whole game to Gear VR. That is unbelievable. And actually, I would love to see that. It's pretty incredible what is possible. And they're going to show it off at GDC in 2018. And yeah, very short news item just to let you know about that. Um, GDC is going to happen in a couple of weeks. And this should be really, really exciting. I'm sure the next few weeks are going to be super, super exciting for this channel and for MRTV Live number 10, 11, 12, and so on. Okay, very short news item. Let's go to the next news item. And the next news item is also very short. Rift owners should start receiving the $15 free Oculus credit today. And that was a couple of days ago. And indeed, I told you already that, um, yeah, they had some problems. There was a certificate that expired and nobody on this planet Earth could use the Oculus Rift for one day. They fixed it 
And then they said, you know what, guys, you couldn't play for one whole day. We're going to give you $15 of store credit. And I received that money on my Oculus Rift. And everybody who played the Oculus Rift after the um, yeah after the first of February got that money. And I think that this is simply incredible. Oculus, as compared to HTC, they really, really take the community. They take them for the most important. Or not, they regard the community as the most important. And you can simply feel the difference, right? So when things break, they're going to exchange it to you for you without um, charging the repair. If you cannot use um, their headset for a day, okay, they're going to give you $15 that you can use on their store. They are they really understand that the community that we are the most important for their future. And that's why I believe I believe in five years, Oculus is going to be there super strong and HTC is going to be gone. Yes. So everybody got $15 and I have also received that money <laughs> and that's good. Yeah, so all of you got it, right? <laughs> all of you got it, yes. Perfect, that's nice. Mo got it, LJ Mario got it. Brandon says Oculus One, HTC Zero, absolutely. And Dart Quencher says buy HTC, hello Pimax. Guys, I'm so looking forward to that sweat test for the Vive Pro. You have no idea. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next news item. And the next news item is... <laughs> okay, this picture again shows the Pimax. Look at that huge lenses. It's unbelievable. 200 degrees of free... 200 FOV. It's simply unbelievable. Those huge lenses. Nice. Okay, so this news item is about 18 megapixel display to be unveiled in May from Google and LG. Wow, so last week we heard about this unbelievable display that Google and LG are going to show off. And let me read out the, this news item. This is pretty incredible. During the display week trade show in late May, Google and LG are reportedly set to reveal a highly detailed 18 megapixel 4.3 inch OLED VR headset display. You can see the session which will take place from 11.30 a.m. to 11.50 a.m. on Tuesday, May 22nd, listed in this advanced program here. According to the session summary, an 18 megapixel 4.3 inch 1443 ppi 120 hertz oled display for wild wide field and view high acuity head mounted displays the world's highest resolution 18 megapixel 1440 ppi oled on glass display was developed white oled with color filter structure was used for high density pixelization and an n-type LTPFS, LTPS backplane was chosen for higher electron mobility compared to mobile phone displays. Wow. The custom high bandwidth driver I see was fabricated. Foveated driving logic for V and AR application was implemented. Wow, 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 wow. What can I say? This is going to be crazy. So 18 megapixels at 120 hertz. So this is pretty incredible. So now we are kind of um, salivating <laughs> on the Pimax 8K, right? With its 4K displays per eye. But Google is going to show off an 18 megapixel display. M unbelievable. And Actually, no computer could run this at this so at this resolution. It's just too high, right? So instead, they're using foveated driving logic. So this means that they only display the highest resolution at the point where you're looking at. So 
this display is going to be used with some headset which has um, eye tracking and foveated rendering. So this means they're only going to show a certain certain area in high resolution and the other areas that you're not looking at they're going to show it in in a, in a lower resolution so that means that computers that we're using now can render it and still for you it's going to look like okay reality there's no screen draw effect anymore at 18 megapixel it's going to be simply like reality it's going to be so good and the future of VR is just so wide open and guys, we are really the four, on the forefront of this. And it's exciting to join this wild ride and we, got, we are already kind of fascinated with the Samsung Odyssey, right? And we love our Vive and our Rift and our PSVR, but the future is here in May. They're going to show this 18 megapixel display and probably a year later is going to be in the next Google headset. Who knows, right? So, wow, I think this is going to, this is going to happen. Um, yeah, in 2019, probably we're going to have devices like this. Incredible, really incredible. All right. Nice. Let's go to the next news item now. So, Valve introduces automatic resolution rendering for SteamVR based on GPU headset. So, what is this news about? So, if you want to have a higher resolution on your headset, you can do that and you can use so-called super sampling. So, in SteamVR, you simply go to the settings and then you go to the developer settings and then there's... Um, one thing that you can change is called super sampling. And with that super sampling, you can increase the resolution in your headset. And that is pretty good and it works pretty well. However, you have to make sure that your PC actually is able to render it. So if you change it to 2.0 or 2.5 or whatsoever, your um, computer, your graphics card has to work much, much harder. But Everything looks better. However, in the new version of Steam VR, you don't have to do that. Steam VR will automatically for you do that. So they will automatically put in super sampling, put it to 1.8, put it to 2.0, put it to anything that your computer can actually handle. And that is pretty cool. And if you want to use that now already, you can. You simply have to opt into the Steam VR beta. So how does it work? You you simply right click on Steam VR in uh, in Steam, and then you simply go to the beta tab, and then you simply opt into the Steam VR beta program. And then starting from now, you can make use of the automatic resolution rendering, and I think that is pretty awesome. So they will automatically apply super sampling um, based on what your computer can do. So that is pretty awesome. However, I'm wondering these figures, what are they doing? It looks kind of questionable in Germany, at least. <laughs> if you're in Germany and if you know about the German history, Second World War, then we are wondering what are these guys doing? Are they Germans in Second World War? <laughs> so, <laughs> so guys, I must tell you this show is polit politically not correct. Yeah, I must. This is a disclaimer. I'm drinking um, adult beverages and such. So this is a politically incorrect VR show. Okay, anyways, so let's go to the next <laughs> news item. So <laughs> these, they should have used something else, in my personal opinion. Okay, now. 
And Mo, Mo Fun VR has just advanced to level 6. Very good. Okay. Now, the next news item is Big Screen opens up alpha testing for Gear VR shared room sharing. So, for all of you who don't know yet, what is Big Screen? Big Screen is a great free app for your um, PC VR headset. In Big Screen VR, you can use your desktop in VR, you can make it super huge, you can play your 2D games in VR, you can invite your buddies over into your VR and together you can watch movies. It is pretty, pretty awesome. And recently they even started to, to, um, yeah, to, to screen some uh, Stargate origin, Origins, some new, um, some new series in a big theater kind of setting. And it is a pretty awesome app. It's completely free of charge. And it is fun. So really, I can just tell you guys, do check out Big Screen. And the news here is that Big Screen is now also coming to Gear VR to, and to Daydream. So even for our uh, mobile VR friends, <laughs> Hemi, I love that picture. Even for our mobile VR friends uh, who are using Daydream and Gear VR, soon you will be able to join the fun and the alpha, uh, the alpha testing now started for Gear VR. So Gear VR people can opt in into the alpha and yeah, they can join the fun on big screen VR. So definitely very good news. Uh, big screen again, all of you should download it and give it a try. It's a very, very nice app. So, I have to politically incorrect, add some more adult beverage because it is a Saturday night. And I'm not out with my friends partying. I'm here with you guys. Cheers. <laughs> Sevilla. <laughs> Cheers. Daniel Bryan Army, cheers. ZK Nightlight, cheers. Good, let's go to the next news item here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Skyrim VR is coming to Rift, Vive and Windows MR on April 3rd. Guys, finally. Finally, finally, finally. How about we watch the Skyrim trailer together, okay? Let's watch the Skyrim trailer together now. Here I am and what do you guys think of Skyrim? Are you going to buy the game? Yes or no? Please say yes or say no if you're not going to get it. The game is going to cost you $60. So it's a full price game and I must tell you guys, hell yes! <laughs> Oh my goodness, hell yes, I'm going to get that game. So let me read 
Let me read out what are you guys saying. So, Cosmonaut, yes. MoFun has played it for 70 hours now. Wow, that's good. Admiral Akbar, tempting, but I've played Skyrim plenty, yeah, of course, but in VR? Mo Fun says, so awesome, even on PSVR. Totally agreed, Mo. I love that game on PSVR. It's incredible. Hemi, yes, eventually. LJ Mario, no, because I have the 2D version. Yeah, but VR. ZK Nightlight, Goosebumps, the old good days, and now finally arriving in VR. MoFun says, this will break the VR barrier, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Push the button, maybe. Think it's too expensive. All games are too expensive today. Raging Donut, although I'm definitely going to avoid being killed by a giant. For my white carpet's sake. <laughs> LJ Mario, not for the full price. Yeah, okay guys. And Raging Donut explains it now for us. Tell us, Raging Donut. Because it would be nauseating. Poorly written. <laughs> I think we kind of disagree on that one. I'm more on Mo's side who says best 60 bucks you can spend. Totally agreed on that one. So I have already spent like, I think I, I spent 69 euros for the PSVR version. Mo, is it right? Did we spend 69 euros for the uh, PSVR version? I spent it, you know, I spent that money on the PSVR version. And I, I was kind of like, uh, yeah, okay, on PSVR, yeah. <laughs> and then I played it and I thought like, uh, oh, the move controls are oh, really not so nice. Yeah, so I kind of was fighting with the move controls on PSVR and it's kind of a pain, really, I must be honest with you guys. But then after like three or four hours in, I kind of got used to the bad controls on the move and then I simply loved it. I had not played Skyrim in 2D before. So for me, it was the first time I played Skyrim and I played it in VR. And it was simply unbelievable. I loved every second of it. And I just stopped it because I knew if I would keep on playing, I will not be able to make any videos. <laughs> Probably I should have done it um, like Mo and simply stream it. <laughs> that would, it would have been probably uh, more smart, but I didn't and I, I didn't play anymore. But you know what? I think it's good that I only played like, I don't know, probably I played 10 hours on PSVR. Loved every single moment of it. But I'm, I'm really glad that I didn't play too much of it because now I can play it on my Samsung Odyssey. And I'm so much looking forward to see that unbelievable, beautiful world in my Samsung Odyssey. So I loved it in the PSVR. I'm thinking it's worth it to get the PSVR just for Skyrim. It is so nice, but to have it in the Samsung Odyssey, it's going to blow my mind. And I'm going to live stream that as well. I'm going to do it this time, Mo. I'm going to learn from you and I'm simply going to live stream whenever I play and I will let other people help me to solve the game. <laughs> so, oh yeah, and push the button just said, when you get Pimax, you're going to try it? Of course, I'm going to try Skyrim on the Pimax 8K. It's going to be pretty, pretty awesome. So definitely, guys, I can only tell you, go and get Skyrim. It is unbelievable in VR. It's one of the best games in VR, and I can't wait to play it on PC VR because the only thing that held it back on the PSVR were the bad control scheme, really. The bad control scheme on the PSVR is the only thing that kind of held it back from being unbelievable. So to have it on the Oculus, to have it on the Windows Mixed Reality and to have it on the Vive is going to be a game changer. And just like Mo said, 
it's going to break the barrier. Lots of people will get into VR just to play Skyrim VR. It is a game changer. This game in VR is unbelievable. And it's totally worth it, the 60 bucks. Go get it, go get it, go get it. Did I mention to go and get it? <laughs> get Skyrim VR, really. And you know what? I'm going to pay that money as well, the $60 um, again, because I want Bethesda to be damn successful in VR. I want them to be the shining beacon to other game developers to port their best games into VR. There's so many games that um, have not been ported and that probably would be awesome in VR. Right, Brandon? Brandon always tells me, oh, when are they going to port this and this game into VR? And I always think like, yes, you're right. They should totally port lots of awesome games into VR. And like, if the port is just as good as Skyrim VR, why wouldn't they do it? And I really want Bethesda to be, yeah, to be successful with it. Yeah, so I'm going to get it. Cheers. Yeah, guys. So, who of you is going to get that game? Most of you are going to get it, right? And who of you have not played it in 2D before and are going to play that for the first time? <laughs> wow. Sevilla Decay is buying it now. <laughs> that is cool. And Cosmonaut is saying, abso freaking lootly. <laughs> yeah, this this is incredible. Hemi, okay, Hemi, you also have not played it, in, played it in 2D. You are really up for a treat. It's going to be awesome. And also, Mo Fun hadn't played it in 2D before. Incredible. So, Mo, how do you like it? How would you rate it on a scale from 1, it sucks, to 10? It is unbelievably incredible. Wow. Mo Fun says it's awesome. And he rates it a 12 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I can only agree to that assessment, really. It's it is just so good. It's it's just so good. It is incredible. And uh, Mo, are you going to get the PC version as well, even though you have played 70 hours already? Mo Fun says, I think yes. And then I think what he means is like, hell yes. <laughs> it's going to be much better, I'm telling you, Mo. The the controls, really, those those move controllers are just not right. They are not good enough, really. So you're going to enjoy it on your Oculus Rift so much more, I think. And yeah, you can play the adventure in a different way now. Right? So, this is, uh, yeah, Mofan says he's fine with the moves, with the moves, but uh, yeah, you got used to them, of course. I got used to them as well. <laughs> you don't need to teach me. I can use it, but I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I'm used to Oculus and uh, to the others and to Windows Mixed Reality and it's just better. Okay, let's go back to the news. And yeah, so Skyrim VR is simply going to blow us all away. And 
Yeah, it's coming on April 3rd. So we are only like a couple of weeks away from it. Oh, holy news. Oh no, oh no, that's, that's dangerous. So let me just go back to the studio. Let's check something here. Some settings here. Okay. Let me check something here. Okay. Good. Thank you, Admiral, for letting me know. Yeah, the tick the have to set something up here. Okay. Good. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Exactly. The whole track played through. <laughs> okay, that's good. It's holy news. Okay, now let's get to the next news item now. We only have two news items left and then MRTV Live number nine is going to be history. Yeah, we have some more software coming up. So latest Arc Park trailer promises gorgeous VR visuals, big explosions. So probably you know a game called Arc Survival Evolve, and there's a spin-off called Arc Park, which is kind of a Jurassic Park copycat. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to come to us in VR, and let's have a look at the trailer together. Wow, really nice. It looks so nice, right? What do you guys think about it? It does look pretty awesome, doesn't it? Let me just check something here. Yeah, so it looks really incredible. And let me tell you a bit more about Arc Park. So, or let me simply read out the news. That's easier, isn't it? So, it's finally getting near time for the release of Arc Survival Evolved spin of Arc Park. And the new trailer this week suggests it's going to be one of the biggest VR games of the year so far. It looks really good, doesn't it? So, the footage is the first we've seen that focuses on both sides of Arc Park's offerings. On the one hand, there's the slower, more educational side of the experience that lets you get up close with the game's variety of prehistoric beasts, studying them and learning about them. This is the side of the game that will invite casual players and those checking out VR for the first time into the fold. So basically you can get into the Jurassic Park, into Arc Park and you can check the dinosaurs and you can run around the park and it's basically like Jurassic Park if nothing went wrong, okay? And I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just to show off VR because seeing those dinosaurs in huge in front of you it's kind of cool, I believe. And this is the one part of Arc Park where you can 
basically basically go to Jurassic Park and check out the dinosaurs. Um, yeah, up and close and personal. And then for the action junkies and VR initiated, there's the wave shooter mode, which sees you gun down hostile dinosaurs as you defend a beacon. It's not the most original VR gameplay we've seen, but we have to admit it's incredibly polished. The visuals on display here are some of the most detailed we've seen in VR so far, plus there's a giant gorilla. <laughs> Good point. Elsewhere developer Snail Games confirmed that the game will have 10 maps to explore, either on your own or with friends. <laughs> Outside of the shooter gameplay, there are also several puzzles to solve by gathering gene fragments that will help to capture certain creatures. You can even breed breed breasts. Oh no, beasts. Oh, okay, sorry. This is really political incorrect. <laughs> beasts. You can breed beasts by collecting and <laughs> incubating eggs. <laughs> yeah, this is life, guys. Cheers, exactly. <laughs> Art Park is launching on March 22nd on PSVR, Rift and Vive. <laughs> exactly. Cheers, guys. <laughs> guys, I'm so happy to have you here. Probably you enjoy that live feeling, right? That's good. Yeah, so Art Park is going to launch very soon and this definitely seems like a game that we probably should check out. Okay, guys. Now we're going to the last news. The last news item for today's MRTV Live number nine. And Brandon has asked if we should do some kind of big thing for MRTV Live number 10. Yeah, I would totally love to do a big thing for MRTV Live number 10. If any of you have any ideas what to do for what special thing to do for MRTV Live number 10, please do let me know in the chat or in the comments or anywhere what to do for MRTV Live number 10. Okay, but now let's get to the last news item. Gameplay live stream. Yeah, perhaps. Hey, <laughs> El Rimo, you are a smart guy. You are smart. <laughs> Free Skyrim keys. Oh yeah, this is a good idea too. Flip side is my vote. That would be fun too, right? For MRTV Live number 10. Raging Donut. Yeah, perhaps hold a LAN party in Rec Room with all the fans that have VR, like a paintball game. Yeah, that's good too. But you know what, Raging Donut? We're doing this, we do, we're going to do it after every live stream. So also today, after the live stream, we're going to have a party in Rec Room. So. All of you who would like to join me in Rec Room later, simply add me as a friend. I have the incredibly creative ID MRTV. So simply send me a friend request on Rec Room MRTV. Yeah, the super, super um, creative ID. And do add me on um, on Rec Room and after this live stream give me like 10 minutes to calm down and then I'm going to go to Rec Room and everybody who has um, who has befriended me on Rec Room I'm going to invite them to a game of paintball or we can try something else as well but paintball is just so good okay Great, Brandon is going to come too, very nice. But now let's go to the last news item for today before we go into Rec Room to say hello. The last news item is, oh yeah, I'm excited about this one. So, Creed Rise to Glory is a VR boxing game from the makers of Sprint Vector. <laughs> so I think I already know what game I'm going to play in my brand new Vive Pro. <laughs> okay, guys, 
let me read out let me read out this news item <laughs> so sprint vector developer service is trading the track for the ring for its next vr experience the studio today announced creed rise to glory in partnership with mgm interactive it's a vr boxing experience that ties into the movie series starring starring michael b jordan and spinning off from the beloved rocky franchise you'll play as adonis creed and begin training under none other than rocky balboa wow battling your way through the ranks as you tour some of the world's best known rings yeah I I could think of worse things than being being taught by Rocky Balboa how to box. So Servius is a great company. They have done raw data. Raw data is incredible. They have done Sprint Vector. Sprint Vector is incredible. Well, my wife died, but still Sprint Vector is incredible. And now the third game is going to be a boxing game. So I have like high hopes for this one this might become incredible so um, boxing in VR is nothing new and games like knockout league have already taken a very decent jab at it but Servius is looking to improve the standards of VR melee combat with what it calls phantom melee technology this new system combines responsive control with a virtual stamina meter that will slowly fatigue the VR character, cause, causing them to stagger, at which point you won't have control over your punches. Yeah, sounds incredible. It sounds like an intriguing system that wants to create an authentic boxing experience with realistic hit reactions. Service will be showcasing the game at the 2018 game developers conference next week though there's no word yet on when the game will release and what platforms will it debut on debut on that said creed 2 is due for release towards the end of the year so we wouldn't expect it to be too far off nice very nice so definitely so much looking forward to try creed on my brand new Vive Pro, which I'm going to buy for myself. Creed Rise to Glory. Yeah, sounds good. And I'm kind of very, very much looking forward to try out Creed. Yeah. Sevilla asks, is Knockout League any good? Yeah, it's very good. Very good. And that's what I heard at least. But I also bought it and I'm also going to try it out. Okay, guys. That was the last news item. I really hope that you enjoyed this live show. Wait a moment. I'm nearly finished here. Yeah. So again, um, that's it for MRTV Live number nine. I really hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. I think you did. If yes, please do let me know if you enjoyed it and please give it a thumbs up so that more people can find this video and can find this channel. Again, I'm super, super happy that so many of you subscribed. We have like 7,300 subscribers now, which is incredible. This channel is merely five months old and it's one of the fastest growing VR channels out there. So thank you for this, for making this happen. As you know, I have found my passion with this. I love doing this and I'm going to stick to it even if the next Vive breaks. <laughs> okay, again, thank you so much um, for joining this live stream, for being there in the chat, for being on YouTube and yeah, for enjoying these shows and again please tell as many friends as possible about mixed reality tv this is an this is an independent channel which is not bought by the big corporations which is not bought by the game developers 
and you will get the most authentic news here on Mixed Reality TV. So please tell your friends about this channel. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers as soon as possible. And with this, I'm saying goodbye and please all of you do add me on um, Rec Room. We're going to go there now. Go and join the MRTV Discord server and go to the multiplayer um, channel to find out more details. So see you all in Rec Room in around 10 minutes or so. Was so nice to have you here. See you in the next episode. Bye.